Hey, church, hope you're having a good time in this sort of weird, sort of strange season between Christmas and New Year, praying that it's blessed and that you are enjoying the uh, the season that God is giving each and every one of us. We're in part two of thinking about my best life now, your best life now. And yesterday we talked about two things. We talked about enjoying what you have and remembering that life is not about things. The third thing I want to focus our attention on today in terms of, you know, enjoying our life and making the most out of life is thirdly to not compare with others. It's a tragedy when we live our lives comparing with others. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 12 says this, we do not dare classify or compare ourselves. It is not wise. Wow. Exodus 20, 17, you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Don't compare. Don't covet. Don't be jealous. And uh, I think sometimes, you know, certainly in this in this selfie generation, the reality is this, is that people who spend hours taking the perfect selfie and then we look at that from where we live and often can look at this staged image and think to ourselves, it's not fair. Why does my life not look like their life? I was once in, in Africa with, with my family. We were on a vacation, actually, and we were on a safari. And in this particular safari jeep, as we were looking at the animals, and it was an amazing view and amazing experience, there were these two young women in their 20s sitting in front of me and my son, and they spent all their time taking selfies, posing for the perfect shots. And the tragedy was this, is that even though the images that they took of themselves looked great, and the backdrop behind them, the tragedy is not only did they miss out on the beauty around them because they were so interested in themselves, but also friends and potentially family members who live around the world would see these shots and say, well, it's not fair. How come I don't have that experience? Comparison is a real, real tragedy. You know, they do say that comparison is a game of fools. And um, and if we live and, and by comparison, that, that is a real great tragedy and can cause us to miss out on the opportunities before us. Somebody once wrote this. If we're going to compare ourselves, compare ourselves to this. Number one, take out all the furniture in your house except one table and two chairs. Use a blanket and pads for beds. Number two, take away all of your clothing except your oldest outfit and leave only one pair of shoes. Thirdly, empty your kitchen cupboards and fridge, except for flour, sugar, salt, potatoes, onions, and beans. Number four, close the bathroom, stop off the water, remove all your electrics. Number five, move your family into the garden shed. Number six, now place your garden shed in a shanty town. Number seven, cancel Wi-Fi. There's no great loss. Not None of you or not many of you can read anyway. Number eight, Leave only one radio for the whole shanty town. Number nine, move the hospital 10 miles away and put one midwife in charge instead of a doctor. Number 10, throw away all your money apart from five quid. Number 11, raise a meager crop. Tenth of it goes to money lenders and a third to the landlord. Number 12, cut off 25 or more years in life expectancy. Why do we say all those 12 things? Because friends, that's how 95 plus percent of the planet actually live their lives. Let's stop comparing ourselves with a selfie generation, a media-driven generation, and let's learn to enjoy once again that which God has given us. The fourth thing that I want to kind of share with you about living our best life now is to focus on the things that will last forever. 2 Corinthians 4.18, we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. What can be seen lasts only for a time, but what cannot be seen lasts forever. I, many years ago, remember a preacher using a sermon illustration and getting on stage a very long piece of rope with a small mark in the middle. And he said, this small mark in the middle represents your life in the context of eternity from beginning to end. And I think there's so often we we focus so much of our attention, our, our emotions, our our everything about living for the moment and living in the moment. And we take our eyes off the beginning to the end, the alpha, the omega, the sense of eternity. So please remember, once again, this season, and as we come into a new year, remember that there is more than what you see with the natural eye. Let's focus our attention 
less on just stuff and more on things that live and last for eternity. And the Bible is really clear that the only thing that lasts for eternity is the souls of men and women and where those souls will be in eternity. Friends, this Christmas and New Year season, I am praying that God gives you amazing opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with friends. Let's be salt. Let's be light. Let's make a difference. Let's be kind. Love you and look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow for part three in My Best Life Now.